first of all, I, I would like to know who who comes. So, so there were three different um, invitations, kind of. So we have uh, um, we have announced this event on the basic income meetup group. We have announced this event um, on the um, on the Bitcoin meetup group and on the uh, ThoughtWorks uh, page. So, who's here from the uh, basic income meetup group? All right, thank you. And who's here from the uh, Bitcoin Bitcoin Meetup group? Okay, perfect. And I guess the others are from the ThoughtWorks. Okay, perfect. So, um, what will be um, the evening uh, about? It will be about um, circles. And circles is a, is a currency, and here comes the connection between those topics. It's a new currency. It will be a new currency similar to uh, to Bitcoin, but it will implement um, its basic income. And um, so the idea for the for the evening tonight is um, I will give a presentation what Circles is, how it will work, and I think after 45 minutes uh, we will have a break, and and after that we wh whoever is interested. Uh, we can have a, a deeper discussion, or even maybe we could um, even split up. Just uh, welcome, welcome. Um, just um, um, general announcement uh, directly at the beginning. So we founded this uh, first Berlin Basic Income Meetup Group. So if if anyone is interested in um, giving a presentation or uh, uh, something on the basic income, you are very welcome, and um, we will find out together uh, what we can do. But now, um, let me introduce to you Circles. Um, as, as I said, Circles will be a new uh, money where every person gets its own, creates, the person itself creates its own um, money, its own, um, basic income. So all money that is available in this system would um, uh, would come to existence via basic income. Um, and then people can connect to each other uh, and join groups and or circles. And within a circle, they would share. Uh, they they would um, uh, accept uh, each other currencies and therefore kind of. Um, use the same currency, or they, they would agree to a one-to-one -one exchange rate, and um, within a group where everyone has its own personal currency and all are connected with one-to-one -one exchange rates, they would basically use the same currency. But um, I will go um, to this more in detail, and I hope I hope I will catch everyone up. Uh, uh, if you come from from the Bitcoin perspective or you come from the uh, basic income perspective, so um, two two more words to describe it. It would be uh, bottom up money or it would be uh, positive money because all money is um, created debt free today in our um, money system. Um, money is created when someone uh, um, takes a loan or make debt in in circles. All money would be a basic income. So, welcome, welcome, <laughs> come in. So, um, I, s I a little bit assume that you all already are familiar with the concept um, of basic income. This slide will not convince you, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess you have to uh, you um, uh, you have to um, think more about it and and. and come to the conclusion that it's a good idea, but uh, just very short, why a basic income, or what is a basic income? A basic income is the idea that every person should get uh, at least so much money just for being a person um, to cover the basic needs um, of the person. And there are lots of good reasons um, for, for a basic income. I will only shortly uh, mention those those three, there are a lot more, um, but again, I, I somehow uh, expect that you are already familiar with the concept of a basic income. So it's, a, it's a m the most unbureaucratic way to establish 
um, social welfare, every other system of um, means-tested uh, social welfare comes with a lot of um, disadvantages and um, yeah, un un uh, and um, yeah, it, it cuts cuts the freedom um, uh, and privacy of, of people. Um, some people see it as a automation dividend, so um, so through automation, um, the, uh, a lot of wealth, uh, a lot of uh, value is created in our society, and you could see the basic income as a dividend um, paying out this wealth that is not, um, I mean, it, it, it's not, if, if you have today a company and you, lose, uh, and you use a lot of technology, then most of the technology you use is not, uh, um, created by you, but you use um, the stuff generations uh, before you invented, so you could see it as a, as a um, fair thing to, to distribute a share of, of this value that's created today uh, just to everyone uh, per person. Um, yeah, another point is um, today we say if um, if, if, if there is new uh, automation, uh, then people are afraid and say, okay, well, that will destroy 10,000 jobs. I would say, wow, that's a great thing. Then the people are free to do other stuff. But uh, obviously the question is, how uh, do they still get an income? With a basic income, this problem would at least um, on a, um, yeah, th that would be solved because they just get a basic income, they have an income, and above that they obviously can earn more, but um, there is not this need that we, uh, that we need to organize our society so that we have uh, Vollbeschäftigung or that we have a job for everyone, so I, I really like the slogan uh, Freiheit statt Vollbeschäftigung, uh, freedom instead of uh, jobs for everyone. So um, another, another uh, way to see it, uh, another way to, to, uh, to look at it, why a basic income would be a good idea. After uh, the last 10, 20, 30 years, uh, economists told us that there is this trickle down uh, effect. So that if, if their money is, is created or money is, um, I don't know, big, big companies uh, can get a lot of money from central bank and then the money will trickle down and everyone will have a job and everyone will finally get money. We can, we can uh, revert, welcome. Uh, we can revert this idea, we can say, okay, money is not uh, created up there, but it is created per, um, on, the, on the bottom level. Uh, every person creates its own money and so we have a trickle up instead of a trickle down. Uh, economy. So, um, again, why, why circles, or what, what, what are the ideas? Um, if, if we agree that uh, we want basic income, then we could ask ourselves, how should it be implemented? And one uh, way, obviously, would be we, we try to build it on top of our current money system, right? So the, the traditional way would be, okay, we ask a government and uh, they will somehow collect money collect through taxes and then distribute a basic income uh, to the people. Uh, but the, 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 more, the, uh, the more direct way would be to implement the idea directly into the money system. So why build it on top of the money system if we can directly build it into the money system? If you come from the Bitcoin perspective, then um, the second bullet point is, is a way to think about it. So you probably already agree we should have a decentralized currency um, like Bitcoin. Um, but what is a fair distribution of this currency? With Bitcoin, the money is distributed um, to the miners. Um, wouldn't it be nice or wouldn't it be uh, wouldn't Bitcoin be way more successful if, if everyone uh, would, would get a few Bitcoins? In the first, in the old days of Bitcoin, you just would need your PC 
uh, turn it on and you would earn some, some bitcoins. But those days are, are gone for a long time. Today, you, you really need to invest a lot of money um, to, to mine some bitcoins. So my argument is uh, if, 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 if the distribution of bitcoins um, would be way broader, so way more people would have at least some uh, bitcoin would be more successful. So a way to see circles uh, would be, it's a currency like Bitcoin, but the distribution of, 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 the, um, of, the, of, the, of the money is, is way broader, it's, it's per person. Um, the, uh, yeah, the current implementation, um, uh, the implementation I suggest is on Ethereum. Um, I, will, I will describe um, details later. So, um, some of you might, might ask, or already some, some uh, asked me, uh, is it possible at all? Is, is, is this realistic what you are uh, proposing? I would say, of course. So, um, first, Bitcoin is obviously the, the best example that it is possible to create a, a new currency, and, it, and Bitcoin is pretty successful. Um, currently worth around about uh, 7 billion um, US dollar. And the second, um, and, and the graph you are seeing there, uh, look at the green line, that is, um, that is the, amount, the amount of US dollars that uh, are out there. So, um, so the idea to constantly distribute um, new money or new coins uh, that is not a new thing. That is happening today in our money system. So some people might, um, might um, argue that is generally a bad thing and we should have something with Bitcoin with a fixed supply. But uh, I would argue we can, uh, we can have money where constantly new money is distributed, but we should distribute it per person as a basic income. And then it would be uh, fair, but and it still can work because I mean the dollar, you can. Uh, there's a lot of things to criticize about it, but it works somehow. So, just to answer the question, it is uh, possible. Um, that brings uh, brings me to the slide. Um, it's a quote from uh, Bernard Lietar, and the question is, uh, what is money? <coughs> what is money at at, at its core? And, um, and his definition is, money can be defined as an agreement within a, within a community to use something as a medium of exchange. And as an agreement, money lives in the same space as other, other social contract, uh, constructs like marriage or a lease agreement. Um, These uh, constructs are real, even if they only exist in people's mind. Um, the money agreement can be made formally or informally, freely, um, and so on. So the, the, important, um, the important note is um, that our money and mon monetary system are not God-given, um, not de facto realities like air or water, but they are choices. Uh, we have choices and um, we can see money as a social contract and we could decide to have a different one. And, um, and the social contract money that basically uh, defines um, how people are allowed to access goods and services, this, um, we can have a new social contract that includes the idea of the basic income that everyone has um, access to um, basically his basic needs. Very short. How how could it look like? We could have an app um, where you, or uh, I mean, it, it, it's a decentralized system, but one um, you can you can have an app where you just uh, get constantly um, your basic income. Um, it, it, it's a number. You have your own um, personal currency. So those are just two slides that um, that show one possible. Um, one possible way to, to, to show it and, and to, to present basically a wallet if you come from the Bitcoin uh, world. 
Okay, now we are trying to get uh, deeper. Um, obviously, there are problems uh, that we need to solve. And in my opinion, the two main uh, problems we need to solve is if we create a currency, how do we make sure that it uh, has value? And the second problem that's for those who are uh, a little bit more technically, but uh, it's very easy to understand, um, it's it's so-called Sybil attack problem. Um, and the Sybil attack is, is something in, in, in computer science. It's just the problem, how do you identify a single person in a decentralized way. So if we would agree, we have a currency, this is a circles idea where, where you get per person a specific amount of money. Um, how do you define per person or how do you define, uh, define who is a person and who is allowed to receive um, a basic income? So why can I not, if it's, if it's decentralized, so there's no central authority who registers your passport or something. Why can I not just create 10 accounts and get uh, 10 basic incomes um, and therefore kind of screw up the system? Welcome. Um, so those are the two um, main problems. And here's how we solve them. Um, Circles consists of uh, 12 rules, and they are all um, very simple, um, but they try to uh, specifically solve this um, Sybil attack problem. But nevertheless, uh, the system is completely decentralized. So there's no central authority who decides you can get a basic income and, and you not. First rule, everyone can create an account. And as soon as you create an account, you just get uh, your basic income. What's important to notice is that this is your personal currency. So it's, it's different from everyone else currency. So uh, let's say even if you would create um, um, ten, if you would create 10 accounts and you would have 10 uh, different currencies and, and the idea later is uh, that, you, um, that you can only make one valuable and, there, and this will come through the other rules. So as soon as an account is created, it will constantly uh, generate um, uh, new coins. So something like, let's say, it, it, it doesn't really matter, but let's say a thousand units um, per week. The third rule is important. Um, this amount of money that will generate, be generated per week, uh, that will increase. So by something uh, two or five percent per year. So in the first year you get thousand units per week, and the next year uh, thousand um, twenty. If we uh, would, would say the growth rate would uh, be two percent, um, that is important uh, because otherwise. Um, the, the value of the basic income is um, uh, it's, it's relevant of how much money is there overall and what's the fraction, what, is, what is your basic income. So if you get 1,000 units and there are already um, 5,000 units um, out there, then those 1,000 are way more valuable as if there, are, there would be millions of, um, of coins already out there. And if you constantly give out the basic income, then, um, then the total amount would um, increase. But if you also increase your basic income, then finally the ratio between newly generated basic income and the amount that is already out there, that will finally stabilize. So the, the, the total money, money supply is not stable, but the ratio between the basic income and the total money supply Z will be stable. Okay, um, rule four and five is, is not so important. Um, it's just if you, if you start a new account, then you will already get coins 
for the last three months. It's just a kind of a usability thing that you directly can start with something so that you don't have to wait uh, if, you, if you start your new, your new account, but instead you already have some coins and you can directly try it out and, and, and spend them. Um, and, and five is a similar rule um, that um, makes it easier to, um, or basically the, the person who brings you into the system gets a small reward of, of your newly generated coins. That are just two rules to make it easier to grow out. But um, an important rule again is uh, rule number six. And here uh, now it, it really starts. Uh, as, as long as people have their own personal currency and no one cares and no one knows about it, it's worthless. It gets, it gets a value if people decide to connect to each other. And let's say um, you have your basic income, you have registered an account, I have registered an account, then we both could agree and we would do it on the blockchain, so in a transparent way so that everyone uh, can see it. We would both um, agree that we trust each other or that we recognize it, each other and that would mean that we are willing to exchange our, um, our two currencies one to one. Um, that it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that he's trusting me totally but, but it just means that he um, accepts my money and I accept um, his money. Uh, of course, trust can be revoked at any time um, by both parties. Um, okay, aid is also not, not so important rule. Uh, if, if you trust them, you, you get some of, of, uh, of his coins. But what's important to notice, if we, have, if we have a group of people and they are all trusting each other, that means they, they fix the exchange rates uh, one to one, all to each other, then that would result in a situation where, uh, where all their currencies are basically the same currency because the value is, is tied uh, to one to one. And then, and obviously that's, that's needed to make a currency uh, useful, that you have uh, bigger groups within, uh, you can use the currency. Okay, finally, um, Okay, I, I guess I, I skipped the code. That's just how you, how you um, write it down on Ethereum. It's way more simple to implement this um, thing on Ethereum. Just a few lines of, of code. Um, finally, the last um, four rules. To give more stability to the system, we allow the, con uh, the concept of groups. Anyone can create a group. And let's say um, I want to create the, uh, the group Berlin, Berlin Bitcoin Meetup, or uh, Basic Income Meetup. And the requirement to, to be, be a member of the group, um, that can be defined by the group and can be any rule. It can be, uh, can be just uh, you have to, to come to me and, and, and show me, or just speak to me and I, I sign you up, or it can be a that 50% of the existing group members uh, vote for it. Anyways, so group can define their own rules and then groups can add accounts as a member. And uh, let's say we have this basic income Berlin group and then you would all be members. Then you have the right, um, okay, we can add members and we can exclude members, but the important thing is um, every member of a group has the right to convert its own personal currency into the group, in, into group money. So I could convert, or everyone who would be in the um, Basic Income Berlin group, could convert its own personal currency into the group currency. My margin, I can ex just uh, convert my margin currency into the group currency, and that brings um, more stability to the system. Um, because otherwise, um, I, I would spend, let's say, my, my margin currency to, to you, and then you would hold margin currency. And it would only, and it would kind of be a um, little bit unstable because as soon as I, um, 
uh, my currency is not longer trusted or not longer accepted by others, those, those coins would be worthless. If it's, if it's backed by a group, then it doesn't matter if, if, if or at least if 10, 20 percent of the group maybe uh, fall out, then still the group would maybe uh, be, be stable. What do you mean by margin currency? Once again? What do you mean by margin currency? By, by what? By Martin, that's his name. Oh, sorry, sorry, Martin, Martin, that's, you know, Martin, my personal Martin oh, currency, sorry. Sorry, sorry, yeah. Can I ask a question? Uh, yeah. Like group, so actually you have like your personal money that's generated, but then when you create a group, the group also has to have a money, right? The, 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 right, but the, um, the generation of money is always and only done uh, on a per person level. So uh, if, we uh, uh, if we create this uh, basic income Berlin uh, group, then there is in the first place no basic income Berlin money. Only as soon as single members of this group decide, voluntarily decide to convert their personal currency into this group currency, then there is um, this group currency. So again, all uh, money that is in the system only um, comes into, into place through uh, basic income. Yeah? Or maybe first thing? The money only gets a value, even though I have not understood where okay. the value comes from, that would be my next question. Yeah. But I, as an individual, mm -hmm. uh, can only put my money into the group money, which is a re reversible process, but somehow in the group there is a mechanism that would allow the group to kick me out, but my money would stay inside. Right, right. So uh, you, if, if, you, if, if you are kicked out, if you are kicked out, then you only have in, you have no longer the option in the in the future to um, to convert your personal money into the group money, but uh, the money you already converted that uh, remains um, stable. Yeah, or the, I mean, it you 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 don't even know who um, who. Uh, so so there the system is similar to Bitcoin. So you have principal anonymous or pseudonymous uh, accounts. So you don't even know. Um, who uh, who owns the, mo uh, the money currently? But there is someone centrally who can block members in a group. Uh, a group can can define its own rules, and it, it, it doesn't. It, it can be a central rule, but it doesn't need to be. So it could be 50% of the of the existing group members have a vote. It can be basically any rule. They can um, define their own uh, rule, and that can be, of course, written as a smart contract. Um, uh, in Ethereum. I, I see a bunch of more questions. Maybe I uh, just continue a little bit and then uh, I'm very, very happy to, to answer more questions. Once again? You said there is this uh, process that uh, anybody can create as many accounts as you want. Yeah. And you can change money by somebody trusting and then changing. How do, uh, do you prevent that I trust me and my other I, I, will, I will come to. I, I will come to that. Um, so, once again, uh, just uh, how it would regularly work. Let's say we have three person, uh, people, A, B, A, B, C. So there's person A, and person A happens to currently have 300 units of uh, A money, so of its own personal currency, and it also has 100 um, units of, um, of um, B money, so the money of uh, person B. Person and uh, person B and A are connected to each other. Uh, person B happens to have uh, 50 units of, of person A and 350 uh, units of its own personal money. And finally, uh, person C has 350 units of, of B and, and so on, and 600 units of um, uh, person uh, of, of, of its own money. So let's say. Um, Person C sells something. So, for example, owns a owns a shop or a, a restaurant, whatever, and and sells something. And person A wants to spend money at, at, at that place, but they are not connected. So that means person C does not necessarily trust um, person A or does not accept um, person A's money. But as long as there is a connection. 
And then what we can do is, since A and B have uh, agreed to the one-to-one -one exchange rate, B and C have agreed to the one-to-one -one exchange rate, A can transfer 100 A units to B, and um, B, and, and that, that can be done uh, automatically on the blockchain, um, because it is written on the blockchain that they trust each other, so B doesn't need to be directly involved in this process. Um, so B becomes, uh, or gets, sorry, uh, 100 units of, of A and forwards 100 units of uh, B money to person C, because person C accepts um, um, B money, right. So, and obviously this chain could be longer. So as, as long as there is a trust connection between uh, yeah, point A and, and someone else um, where person A wants to spend money, it works. Um, now, that's your question. Um, let's say person A creates two more accounts. Um, Sybil 1 and Sybil 2. And obviously, person A would trust Sybil 1 and would trust Sybil 2, and maybe Sybil 1 and Sybil 2 would also trust each other. Then, person A would get three basic incomes. That's right. But, uh, in the end, person A can nevertheless spend only as much money as uh, he or she could spend even if he would have not created um, the two Sybil accounts. And that's because, um, yes, Sybil 1 can pay person C by converting Sybil 1 money to A, converting A to B, and uh, sending the B money to C, but this works only as long as A has money. Uh, as, 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 as soon as A um, only has, uh, let's say, a would start with 300 coins, then Sybil 1 could um, transfer 300 Sybil coins to A, A would um, uh, transfer uh, 300 A coins to B, but this connection stops when, when, those, um, when A has no more A coins and only Sybil 1 coins, and then it wouldn't work because B would not accept uh, Sybil 1 coins. So that means that A, even with those two Sybil accounts, can only spend its regular, uh, legitimate A money. What's this? Clear? Yeah? Okay. Couldn't you regularly produce new Sybils? Like each time A has more money here, you could produce another one and just spend the double? Um, of, you, you can create a great uh, network of 100 Sybils and they all trust each other, but in the end, um, it, what, what you really can spend in the real economy is, is only um, um, this money that is, um, yeah, only, only basically the A money, or only the money of people that, is, that are connected to real people who provide something. Okay, but in three months, A has 300 again, right? If it's oh yeah, 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 right, right. So but then you can spend civil ones first. Right, and exactly. Let's double the amount, which would actually be rewarded to A. Uh, no, you can. So A can only spend uh, the A money, and that's legitimate money. So even if A gets in the future more basic income again, then can civil civil one can spend this A money, but A could spend the A money directly anyways. But what is, uh, oh sorry, what is Yes, no, maybe, person maybe. Civil one? Once again? What is if a person B also trusts civil, civil one? Because okay, right, yeah. then, then it would work. If, 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 uh, if person B would uh, trust civil one, um, then, uh, and A controls A and civil one, then indeed, um, and then indeed A could uh, spend more. So that is the res responsibility of, of person B, and actually um, person B has, um, has a good incentive to only trust person A. So, so if I come and say, okay, that's my personal account, and by the way, I have two more, then you obviously should not um, uh, accept the two more accounts. Um, and, and the reason is, um, that that um, that if if you accept my personal currency and I try to connect to a lot of other people, then 
you get my money and you can spend it at a lot of other, other people, at everyone who I'm connected to. But uh, if, I, if I have a Sybil account that is only um, connected to me and only connected to, um, and I try to, to connect it to you, then you would end up with this Sybil money and that's basically worthless. So um, to um, accept someone's money, um, you should make sure that, that, that this is, on, that this is uh, his real account and where he, he or she um, tries to um, put value behind it and connect it to, to other people. Maybe I, I continue and I'm happy to, to answer more, more questions. So I already explained the concept of groups. Um, we can have a, so um, A and B, let's say they are in, in the, uh, uh, last time I gave, gave, gave the presentation in, 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 in Palo Alto, Silicon Valley uh, Ethereum meetup group, um, and, and B and C uh, are in the Ethereum early adopters or whatever. Um, and, and then they can, um, they, they can uh, convert their, their A or B money into, into this group money. Um, those um, groups can be stacked. So uh, we could have a Palo Alto or Berlin residence group, and that could be part of a um, Berlin residence group, could be part of a Germany residence group. And let's say, um, let's say um, those, those, those people are part of those groups, then maybe there's, it, it, it doesn't need to be a personal connection, that would always be one option, but uh, as long as, as they are um, in the same groups and accept this money uh, from this group, the, yeah, the second way to, to create a connection from, from your money to someone else's would be uh, via the groups. So in this case, everyone who is a um, Palo Alto resident is also a Bay Area resident and a United States resident and potentially there could be a world group. Okay, so that's a little bit a theoretical thought on what is, um, what is the value of your um, personal money. Um, in principle, it should be um, the maximum of, let's say you are part of uh, 20 different groups, then in principle your personal money um, should have um, the value of, of this group with, with, with basically the highest value because you have the option to convert your money in, in all those 20 different groups. So if at least one of those uh, groups has a valuable currency, then also your currency is valuable. So theoretically, the, um, the value of your money is the maximum of the, um, of the groups you belong to and the people you are connected to. If you are connected to, again, 20 people, and so you have the right to exchange your currency um, into, into their currency um, or yeah, exchange with them, um, then again, your currency will, uh, will have this, basically the same value of those people who are, you are connected to. And I have um, added the number uh, a liquid connection. That, that's what I explained before. Um, in the Sybil example, as soon as the connection is no longer liquid, then it's basically um, not there. On the other, the other perspective would be uh, the group money. That would have the minimum, um, or the minimum of all members. So the group money cannot have a higher value. Um, uh, the, um, yeah, the, the value of a, of a group cannot have a higher value than all single uh, members. So basically the group money, the value of the group money is the minimum of, of the ma value of all um, the members. Here we have some more rules how a group can be um, organized. So we could have simply a centralized group where someone says, okay, I'm, 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 uh, I'm responsible for this group and I decide who, uh, who can join and um, who, who not. Um, but we also could have a web of trust rule. So something like um, if, um, 
if 20% of the existing group members um, trust uh, this person and the there's this some so-called uh, the trust uh, a distance between the um, um, or the medium distance between the new member and, and all members in the group, um, you could do some fancy graph, graph theoretical uh, stuff there. Uh, right, this is maximum distance, mean shortest distance, could have a simple voting mechanism, 50, 60, whatever percent um, of the existing members should, could, could vote for someone. Centralized, you can say all employees of a business are a member of, of of the um, of the group. Okay, um, I think um, I, I, I will just show you the next slides, and we will keep. Or I, I will I will skip them and just mention them, and maybe we do it in a smaller round, and then I'll I'll open up for for questions. Um, very important parameter in the system is this growth rate. Um, so this rate that determines. Um, um, yeah, how how much uh, do you get more each each year? How much is the basic income increased? That it's basically the factor. Um, how good is the system a store of value, and is it still a sufficient basic income, and so on? That's that's the growth rate of um, the euro and the dollar. So just helps to um, to uh, find find some numbers. The idea is that we want to maximize um, the basic income for everyone, but if we have the growth rate too high, then the currency is maybe not a good store of value because the inflation is basically higher. Um, so we need to find a balance between, uh, we, we need to maximize this, um, this, this formula. Um, here, the, the, a little bit um, high level perspective um, some of you might know Ripple, um, so you could say, uh, so Ripple is this idea that, that um, uh, basically this one-to-one -one connections, uh, I, I, I trust someone else and if, if there's a connection to, to third party then we can uh, interact over this uh, trust connection. So to some degree circles is Ripple plus uh, basic income, money creation, that uh, serves the people instead of um, yeah, maybe the banks. Uh, debt that doesn't need to be paid back. Um, that debt is, um, is not paid back uh, in, in our system today, so that's, that's the total, total amount of US dollars. So that's nothing uh, new. Um, those are also um, and those are design principles for common resource, uh, for pool of common resources. Um, and to some degree, circles is, is such a common, uh, common pool resource. And so we should um, have a look where we can uh, find in the rules of circles where we uh, can um, connect them to, to those rules. Um, I, I, I skipped this one. The only, um, the last slide I want to, I want to show you before we can open up the discussion, is the next project or the first project we we want to um, we want to do with um, with circles, and we want to open a Späti. We want to open a Späti in Berlin, maybe a, call it BGE Späti or let's see. And the idea is. Um, simple spetti and you can pay with circles to make it very concrete and uh, make it um, um, and, and make it uh, yeah practical and uh, uh, for 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 everyone okay so that that was I, I guess I um, that, that was was it for now I'm very happy to answer more questions and then we will have a break and and then everyone is welcome uh, to, to stay or to d discuss in, 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 in small groups. Thank you. I don't know who was first. Maybe, maybe. Um, <laughs> good, 
good timing. The presentation is over. That's <laughs> Right, right, that's exactly that's exactly right, yeah. Okay. And the other question is uh, my membership in the group is kind of the same as uh, trusting the group in the other way. Uh, it's 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 only in one direction. So uh, being member of the group only gives you the right to convert your money into the group money, but it it, it does not uh, require you to uh, to accept the group money. You can, but uh, you are not forced to. Uh, it's a little bit different with with the personal connections. Then it's really two sided. So 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 both both agree that they um, accept each other uh, currencies. So what's the usage of group? Then? Right. So a group would be useful if, let's say, um, five or ten uh, shops in Berlin together decide we will accept this um, this group money. So they don't say, okay, we. Um, we uh, accept only persons where we are connected to, but we 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 trust in a, in a specific mechanism um, to identify uh, valid persons because that's that's all what the, what it's about. So it's it's really all about solving the civil uh, attack problem, solving the problem who is a valid person, and one um, and one level is this purely person to person, but. Um, but in addition, you can have some uh, some smaller uh, entities. So it's maybe this um, this idea of of um, uh, here we go. So only if we only would have um, the the person to person connection, then we would have this purely um, distributed thing. But we can have uh, small kind of centralized entities, those groups. Um, and they are connected to each other. So it's it's a, it's a, another layer um, that allows different uh, yeah form of, of of connections over there. Yeah. Um, given, given that uh, it's unlikely that all the commodities that uh, Group A circles could buy would also be available in Group B circles, why would you assume a one-to-one -one exchange? I don't think they have a one-to-one. -one right. They they don't. Uh, groups are um, so. One-to-one exchange rate. How does that contribute? Let me think. So um, the one-to-one -one exchange rate is is usually yeah um, on on a person level. Um, as a group, it only works. Uh, the members have the right to uh, basically one-to-one. -one Exchange it, or it, it's not an exchange; it's a conversion. So you convert your personal money into the group money, and then um, let's say there's 12 shops in, in in Berlin. They have agreed, okay, we accept this this currency, and we trust a specific process of identifying members. Let's say you you need to show your passport at, at one of those uh, 12 shops, and he will register you to make sure you can only enter the group once. Then the others would say, okay, I don't need to. Um, I, I, I accept your money and I only want to make sure that you only get your uh, basic income once. That's, that's all I, I need uh, to accept your money and I, I trust this process of this group and um, so I would uh, accept so um, the money. So the value of the circles in group A would not be equivalent to the value of circles in group B. So a shop that accepts circles have to have different prices for every group that they sell. That would be possible, yeah. yeah. In principle, a group can be uh, a mem or a group can be a member of, 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 of a higher group. So, and then uh, you would have the right. Let's say we have this Berlin group, and above this we have a, a Deutschland group. Um, then, um, as a Berlin mem or as you could con convert the Berlin uh, uh, circle into into a Deutschland circle. Um, What's, what's nice about this concept is um, that you, uh, I, I, I like this term of um, connecting the advantages of a local currency and the resilience of a local currency, uh, but having the option to, to scale up and having the option to, um, to form bigger groups and form 
bigger unions of people with the same currency, but if, if, if the Apple layer, the uh, Deutschland layer, somehow breaks down, then we can go back to the Berlin layer. And then if even this breaks down, because um, then we can, again, uh, go back to the, personal, um, to the personal level. So currently, with the Euro, it's, uh, it's kind of a forced, um, a forced union. And, and if, if the Euro breaks down, it, it completely all would, would break down. And uh, with this um, layering of systems where, where the money is, um, uh, I mean, the, the real money, the real money, uh, value of money comes from other people accepting this money. And, um, and if, if, so, so this, this uh, really is a personal level where, where I have my currency and I have those 20 people who are accepting it, um, that's, that's kind of where the money, uh, the value of, of, of every money comes from. And with the circle system, it's, it's, it's more clear um, that a specific um, money, uh, who accepts it? Yeah. How would you determine the price of uh, food in this state? Right, so, um, so there are two options. Um, and and um, we are currently thinking about what option is better. So one option would be to um, to already try to to uh, to start relatively high. So to start something. So if we say you get thousand units per per month, for example, in in, in circles, um, then. If it should be a really, ba a really basic income, then I, I would say today in, in Germany you would need something between 800 and 1,000 euros, so that that you could start with a with a one-to-one -one exchange rate. Um, but I guess then it, the problem would be that those who um, um, uh, then you as soon as you you get your basic income, you get really um, thousand thousand euros, um, but that would make it harder for you to uh, to to agree to basically share this value and and to connect to others um, because so let's say i have a basic income of of um, of 1000 units and they are w worth 1000 euros if as soon as i um, connect to someone else From the, Ukraine, for example. Yeah, just to uh, randomly someone else who, who I know, um, then... Coming from different countries where the basic income in a way should be less. Right, but even, even, uh, even today, um, I mean, in, in the beginning, of, of, of course, it will not be uh, established. So, um, so, the, um, so that would... So I can art, kind of artificially uh, make my uh, currency... Uh, um, set the value to this specific number just by um, being the Späti and, and setting the price to this only for for um, for for a little amount of money, um, but that yeah that would um, decrease my incentive to connect to others. So the other strategy would be to start really low to say okay basic income in the beginning uh, when we start the uh, this system uh, maybe it will be a dollar. A dollar per month or something, and then um, and then as as soon as, as more people connect it uh, and use it, as soon as more um, shops um, accept it, then the the money will will go up. But in principle, it's it's a free it's a free decision, um, and yeah, it, it could be like in Bitcoin, where it, in the beginning, a Bitcoin was worth a cent or even less, and uh, and it gained in value. But uh, unlike Bitcoin, I guess. There's an upper limit for for the value of this currency, because just of the inflational uh, character, just because there's always new coins are distributed, so there will be clearly a upper limit. Would it be possible to exchange like my generated money to fiat money? For example, someone wants to pay. Absolutely. I mean, if you if you find someone who who who, uh, who wants to spend uh, fiat money, of course. So it's it's a free. It's a, it's a, it's a, between, right, right. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the greatest values of the money that we use now is that we don't have to trust directly the person we give it to. And as I understand, maybe I've 
wrongly understood, but as I saw your uh, previous slides, yeah. you have to trust the guy who gives you the money, because otherwise you have this thing like, like you described. You just make one group of siblings, mm -hmm. make sure this one person is trusted, and somehow, I mean, how, how will you uh, overcome that? You need direct trust to, to be able to do transactions? You don't need direct trust, but you need at least indirect trust. You need, uh, so again, this uh, slide where, um, where the transitivity is described. So you need to be connected to, to a set of people, let's say 20 people. So maybe your family and your close friends. And, um, and then the idea would be that I mean, there is a theory that every person in the world is connected to every other person in the world over seven hops. So, over, so, so I know someone who knows someone and so on. Uh, so there need, doesn't need to be direct trust, but there need to be a trust line. And in the end, obviously, the user does not have to care to find this trust line that, uh, that will, the software will do it. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess you, you were. Um, a little further. I have, uh, Let me two questions. Uh, the first is I just wanted to make sure I understood correctly that from a privacy standpoint, this is strictly much worse than Bitcoin because you have to actually present your social graph to a merchant to buy something from them. Right. Um, I you before, I actually have to tell you about the path from me to you, the, the, the trust path. Um, I mean, I mean, yes, yes, and no. Um, so first of all, um, you only need you only need to uh, own some currency that the merchant accepts. Right. But, but, I uh, my second question now, which is that why would I only have one identity? If I, if I, let's say I'm part of two different communities in Berlin, right. Right? Right. and there's a little bit of overlap between them, these mm -hmm. different like, social communities, not uh, in the mm -hmm. blockchain, but real, real communities. Right. Um, and there's some overlap. So an honest person would use one identity and they would build trust relationships with people in both communities, mm -hmm. and they would be limited to spending the amount of basic income that they receive. But a dishonest person would create a separate mm -hmm. identity for each community, and they build trust relationships using each identity. And now they have twice as much basic income. Right. So if you indeed have two completely separated uh, social... Let's say they're not separate. They're okay. They, overlapping. they overlap. They're okay, then... Right. If they overlap, then... Um, then people will realize that you use um, two different identities, right? How? The so that bad that they can actually realize? I mean, it must be really terrible. Uh, I mean, I, I think it is actually that bad, um, <laughs> but uh, that's devastating. You know? um, w w so, so uh, yes. On the one hand, um, you do need kind of a, a you do need to associate a profile um, to your currency. Yes, and, and I, I see your, your point um, um, in uh, criticizing the privacy here. But on top of that, as soon as you are, um, as soon as, as, as your currency, you have your connections, then you can do uh, anything, um, any, um, or you have the, to the total freedom um, of a blockchain and on, of uh, pseudonymous accounts. So. Uh, no one knows uh, how much money you have um, because you can um, you can transfer your money. Um, so, so money does not need to be uh, uh, at an account that's associated with with persons with with a person. Only accounts where new income is generated they needs to na they need to be associated with uh, with a person. But there can be just like Bitcoin addresses, thousands of. Uh, of accounts that are not associated with the persons. Only the money that's in there is but associated. I have my one income generating account that I only use at the Shreddy, and I have another income generating account that I use at the bar down the street. Even if the owners of these two businesses know each other, how would they ever realize that I'm double, uh, I'm taking double basic income? Um, once again, so, okay, but you assume that you are directly connected to them. Yeah, I've got a trust relationship with both of them, but I'm uh, ripping them off. Okay, so again, if you are, uh, let's say you are in two, um, in two separated, uh, you have two, or a little bit overlapping uh, communities. So let's, let's say you, you create your new account and it's trusted by no one else in the, in the first place. Then the, the, the first, um, the, uh, then people should be very careful with um, accepting your money. Actually, because it's, it's also a big risk for them. Because if they ex accept um, 
accept your money that is trusted at this moment by no one else, then you can just uh, exchange um, your potentially worthless currency against their valuable currency, and, and, and that's it. So, uh, so I assume that the first connections, um, so the connections with someone who has no connections yet, you would only do it with family and really close friends you really know and you really want to help um, to get their currency started. And you and usually... That's not to like buy illegal things. Oh, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a whole different topic. Uh, and I mean, I mean um, the, 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 the core trust that... Um, that, um, uh, that, that, that the, the trust is only about um, are you only using one account? And again, the idea is that um, to establish um, the first connections, um, that's a big risk for, the, for those who are accepting your currency. And this big risk, uh, only people would take who really trust you and who really are close family and or family friends. And there, the assumption is that you, as a person, usually have only one circle of really close. Um, uh, trust relation. But you could build multiple identities and trust yourself the whole time, right? Um, yeah, so um, so your argument is okay, I can build a second uh, um, identity and uh, I can, or let's say 20, and those 20 trust um, um, this identity and now I can go to others with this identity and say, oh, look, it is already trusted by 20 others, uh, please trust it. The others should only um, should only take those twenty uh, those twenty accounts into account if or the others should only take uh, accounts into account that they personally trust. So here's this, this web of trust idea. So in in the app we are building, um, you would see. So if someone comes to you and say, "Please trust my currency," you would see to how many people this account, this person is already connected that you personally trust and know that they are real per, a real, real person. So that would, that strategy would not work. But what if uh, one circle is about my, my family? I yes. Also, I create one account uh, where the trust circle is my family. And then because they trust me, they trust me because they, they know me, they know me in personally. And then I have the second account, which I use uh, that my um, colleagues in my company trust me. Right, right. So the idea would be that the colleagues would not trust you. Instead, they would say, wait a minute, uh, why, why, don't, why don't even your family trust you? So because, I mean, you, you would have a, a second account that in the first place no one trusts, and then you would say to the colleagues, oh, please trust it, and they would say, wait a minute, why is no one else, your family and your close friends, why are they not trusting it? <laughs> Okay, uh, then uh, one one server, my mother and my father trust me, and the third certain server, my uh, girlfriend trust me. <laughs> so I have. Uh, In principle, your girlfriend should ask why are not uh, your your parents trusting you? But um, I think we um, we make a short break, or we we uh, or finish it, and um, and then people, I, I'm I'm totally open for for more questions and um, and deeper discussions, but um, I don't want to, to bind those who, uh, who want to go or who are done yet. So maybe again one more, uh, the last announcement, if you have any ideas for, for um, topics around the basic income, uh, let us know. Um, we, then we will decide what's the next um, Meetups um, when they when they when and where and what about they um, will be and and I will stick around and we can have much more questions. It's about uh, about circles, right? Uh, all right, uh, all right. That's a good thing. So, oh yeah, I, I guess I, I forgot to mention about the current status. So the current status of this project is we have a forum about circles.com. Uh, we have some some code, some um, the Ethereum contracts uh, on on GitHub, and also yeah a Twitter handle, also uh, about circles. How long do we have to learn to get one beer from <laughs> Right. So um, uh, so 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 currently 
uh, drinks are there for one euro. <laughs> so just, just, I forgot to mention that. But um, um, yeah, that, 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 that's, that again are the, the two options. So uh, the, the option I, I'm currently fa uh, favoring for, um, for getting it started would, would be to, to set um, the, a basic income uh, of, of one month to something uh, uh, in between five to 10 euros. So yes, you could go to the Speti and grab every month, uh, let's say, four beers. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, let's uh, open it up to um, informal, informal gathering.